Hello again and welcome to another Jay's Shed, a bite-sized pieces of electrical information of all kinds of bits and pieces. And today we are in shed number two, which is the good old brick shed. And today's little, uh, little program, as we say, is going to be about sodium lighting switch gear like I've got here now. This setup here is for running low pressure sodium SOX tubes, like this one here. These have to be run on ballasts and also ignited and so on, which we can see here. Now, just to point out what we've got. Okay, we've got a power in. I can have up to three lanterns running off these. So, lantern one, two, and three. The mains comes in by a cutout down the bottom here that services all three units. So, we start with obviously the switch to switch the lamp on and off with. We then have the capacitor, the silver tubular component there, which is for smoothing out the voltage and uh, helping out with any ripples in the power supply there on that one. Underneath it, this is the main gubbins of the switch gear. This is these LPS, low pressure sodium ballast. And this operates 90 watt tubes, this one here. So then we have that. And then down the bottom here, we've got the igniter which fires out high voltage to start the tube um, and then to let the ballast take over there and down the bottom is where is a normal socket, household socket to plug the lanterns in. This setup you will see um, on, in most street light columns of this type um, it's not just you can get all different kinds of this switch gear which we'll go over in another episode. This will be found in the bottom of the, of the column maybe on a piece of would back on or maybe even in a um, even in a, a feeder pillar maybe as, as well so when this is all switched on it lights up the tube the tube runs red for a while and then within about five minutes various timings the tube will get to its full brightness of the sodium but we'll look at the sodium tube in a, another episode this is where all the control gear is to the lighting collection I like to keep it in one place. We have switch banks up here for lighting out the back. Over here, we've got the actual incoming supply, timers, cutouts, etc. All properly fused, all probably up to all up to proper standards as well. So we're running very good on there. And incidentally, street lighting doesn't take that much current, so it's quite easy enough to um, run them off a household supply. It's all 240 volts. Um, igniters give out little higher voltage just to spike the um, tube to fire um, but basically a lot of people say there's high voltages in lamp columns and feeder pillars sometimes you might get a 415 in, uh, intake if it's on the side of a special feeder pillar yeah possibly but mostly for your like normal average one of the mill street lamp you'll only find 240 volts buzzing around also, this setup would also be complete with what they call a cut-off. It might also have a manual override in there with it for the photo cell on the top of the lantern, which is another topic we should go over as well. But there we have it. So we have capacitor, ballast, igniter. The three main components to bring one of these soxes into life. There we go. And that is it. If you enjoy this little snippet, thumbs up leave a comment down there and subscribe if you haven't already done so and i shall see you in the next video bye bye